हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो लेसन ऑन कंटेंट थ्यूरीज ऑफ मोटिवेशन एज यू ऑलरेडी बी नोइंग बाय नाउ दैट एज पर एज पार्ट ऑफ आर 2018 कोर्स वी आर ऑफरिंग फुल वीडियो कोर्स इन विच वीडियोज वुड बी अवेलेबल फॉर ईच एंड एवरी टॉपिक इन द सिलेबस वेदर इट्स फाइनेंस वेदर इट्स मैनेजमेंट वेदर इट्स ई एस आई वेदर दोज आर करंट अफेयर्स वेदर दोज आर इंग्लिश टॉपिक्स राइट सो दैट शेल बी really beneficial to you all so a little bit about edutab though edutab no doubt is the leader in rbi grade b and nabard grade a and grade b exams uh, we have really produced some good results uh, last year uh, 120 plus students have cleared phase 2 exam held in 2017 that is on 7 july 2017 and we are happy to say that 72 marks worth of paper in fm came from our notes there is also a video available on our youtube channel on the on the finance uh, part analysis and the management part analysis in the fm paper and also there is a video available on our youtube ch channel in which we are discussing in detail about the fm paper question by question and each question along with its options and along with that in that video we'll, we are also telling you uh, where in our notes that question was given that is how could you have answered that question from our notes so we are not simply exaggerating we will give you proper evidence of how and where our notes were helpful in the fm paper for 2017 now let's come to business since this video is about motivation now what is motivation motivation derives its meaning from the word motive and motive means needs desires or wants like you might have a need uh, to to eat food because you are feeling hungry you have a desire to own a car uh, because you know you aspire for it and you might want a girlfriend for you right so motivation is actually stimulating people to accomplish to get into action to satisfy satisfy these needs desires or wants which we call as motives really simple right like your friend pumping up to go and propose to a girlfriend or a aspiring girlfriend whom you want to be your girlfriend is a motivation for you okay now we come to types of motivation there are three types of motivation we will discuss them one by one first is positive versus negative motivation the positive note motivation is that you are motivated to do something good well the negative motivation is that you are motivated to avoid something bad so in both situation you are benefiting either you are getting something good or you are avoiding something bad like the example of positive motivation is that you go to work because you like your friends at work you like the atmosphere there you meet your girlfriend there right <laughs> and the example of negative motivation is you go to work because otherwise you will become poor because otherwise you will not be able to pay your loan because otherwise you will not be able to meet your daily to daily needs now second type of motivation is basic versus learned the basic motivation is instinctive motivation motivation for instinctive motives like hunger thirst you do not know get these by outside it's it's these kind of motives arouse within your inside you feel hungry that is normal you feel thirst thirsty that is normal right and similarly on the other side the learn motivation is which you learn over a period of time that is you learn about that okay recognition is important achievement is important i need to achieve these motives right and the third type of motivation is extrinsic versus intrinsic the intrinsic motivation is something which which comes from inside which gives you internal satisfaction like sense of achievement curiosity interest in something pride in something but the intrinsic in, extrinsic motivation is something outside it is something for materialistic things like money grades praise it might not give you internal achievement internal satisfaction okay got it so now there are two type of motivational theories uh the first one is uh, we call it content based theories the second one is process based theories the content based theories assume that people have set of set of needs what and those needs motivate them to come into action 
the process based theories uh, employ a much complex process uh, which says that employees or individuals select their goals and may make a lot of calculations to achieve those goals and the process of them being motivated to achieve those goals is a very complex process which takes into account various things so the content based theories means basically what motivates people and that is needs which needs motivates them the process based theories means how does people get motivated and the content based theories are also called humanistic approach to motivation theories now since there are a lot of theories in this video we shall only discuss some of the content based theories uh, we shall not discuss any of the process based theories that shall be discussed in a separate video altogether so content based theories are based on this principle that individual has needs when the needs are un unmet they create tension in the minds minds of the individual and individuals then try to satisfy those needs to reduce the tension very simple principle if you have a need that you are feeling thirsty it will create tension in your mind it will make you frustrated unless and until you get water and then you will try to satisfy that need you will try to get unfrustrated you will try to reduce your tension by drinking water it's very simple right now what are the implications of content based theories for a manager the content based theories means that manager has to understand the different needs of different people and act accordingly for example there is an employee who is hell bent on getting a car he always says he wants to buy a car so the motivation for such an employee would be a salary hike so that he can go and buy a car let's see an alternate example suppose there is an employee who likes to have challenging work so for him challenging work is more important than money for such an employee the motivation would be to give him a challenging project in which he learns a lot in which he gets challenged a lot so these are the list of content based theories which are very popular or unpopular we are covering every theory here uh, so the content based theories are first is maslow's motivation theory very famous adolfers hierarchy of motivational needs again very famous then maclellan's theory of needs hersberg's two factor theory or dual factor theory very very important and very very famous theory then macgregor's theory x and theory y we will also discuss about theory z which is not listed here then the last theory is instinctive theory of motivation so there are hell lot of theories under content theories alone remember there are process theories which we will discuss in a separate video but again we cannot discuss all these theories in this video because that will make the length very big so what we plan to do is we will discuss these three theories in this video and rest shall be discussed in a separate video okay Now, first, now we come to Maslow's theories of motivation. This is the first theory which we will discuss. So, Maslow's basically divides individual needs into five needs at five levels. The first one is physiological, uh, which means uh, needs such as water, food, sleep, warmth, exercise, very basic needs of an individual which which needs to be fulfilled. Then there are security needs such as financial security, economic security, like you no. Know, if you have, if you are always worried about lack of money then you will never be financially secure you will never be you now satisfied in your life the third one is social belonging so social belonging means your need to be accepted as a part of a group to have friends right to be social the fourth one is ego need or the esteem need which means everyone has a need to be recognized by others Uh, to be you know have self respect uh, to have status in the society and the fifth one is self actualization which is above esteem needs self actualization means to achieve something what one can achieve to reach the pinnacle of your achievements right like you want to be innovative creative you should be given enough opportunities to try everything right so let, let's discuss some examples the example of physical physiological need can be very simple a baby crying for a milk is is like like his or her physiological need has not been met safety security again a very simple example suppose you are doing a job you are earning good but at your home you do not feel secure because there is always a threat of terrorist in your area 
so it means your safety needs are not met the third one is social needs again your physiological and safety needs are met you are earning good because but you do not have friends you do not have anyone to go to in your uh, social surroundings you will always feel frustrated so it means your social needs are not being met you are being ignored in office the fifth one is esteem or ego needs esteem or ego needs means everyone has needs respect from others and from oneself also like what we call self respect so as long as you get recognition from your manager you get respect from your wife uh you get uh kind of recognition from your friends that you are doing good you are intelligent you will not feel satisfied and the last one is self actualization like i gave you an example you have been doing good you have all your physiological safety social and esteem needs met but still you feel something missing you feel you can achieve more you you are more innovative you are more creative but opportunities are not being given to you to realize your potential that means your self actualization needs are not being met okay so this is all about maslow's theory of motivation very basic theory it's very important to understand the concepts then only you will be able to answer questions in the rbi grade b exam so now we will discuss some implications of the maslow's theories of motivation these are very important uh, most many of the questions are asked from implications so the first one is that managers must make sure that deficiency deficiency needs are met so what are deficiency needs these three are deficiency needs the below three one we also call them lower order needs physiological safety and social belongingness these are called lower order needs or deficiency needs so managers must make sure that all the deficiency needs are met unless and until these deficiency needs are not met you cannot expect employee to do some good work to do high quality work to achieve at his office right and the second one is also related to that that proper envi- environment should be given for employee to achieve full potential so it's okay if manager is taking care of this deficiency needs but unless and until he gives a good environment to the employee to realize his potential that you now giving him freedom giving him freedom to try out his innovation to try out his creativity giving him some confidence giving him some challenging work unless and until manager does not give such an environment employee will not be able to fulfill his or her potential to the fullest so now we shall discuss about some of the criticism of maslow's theories of motivation uh so the first one is wrong order of needs so some people feel that in a collectivist society social belongingness holds much more importance than self actualization because there you belong to a your need to belong to a group is much more uh, than you your need to achieve self actualization so that is the first criticism the second criticism is the position of sex at the lowest level maslow has placed sex as a physiological need but some people feel that a sex as a emotional connect uh, it 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 is concerned with your uh, no social belongingness so they feel that sex should be placed here instead of it being placed here let let's discuss a concept check suppose there is a ram who is a manager He has employed Sham. Sham performance has degraded recently, but otherwise he is a very hardworking and intelligent guy. And Sham is having a lot of back pain. Now, when Ram talked to Sham, he came to know that Sham has a back pain, and he came to know about the reason uh, that due to his back pain, he is not able to perform well, and that's why his performance is degrading. Now, what shall Ram, that is a person here who is Sham's manager, Ram, who is Sham's manager, he is Ram. what shall he do in such a circumstance here are your options on your screen the first option is that he should increase the salary of a person that is sham so that he feels motivated mm, maybe let's see other options uh, ram should take sham to the yoga instructor for resolving his back pain the third option is take him to another person having back pain so that he feels he belongs to a group The option D is assign him more difficult tasks so that he is preoccupied and does not have time to think about trivial back pain. And option is none of the above. So the option D I think is wrong because nowhere it's mentioned that it's a trivial back pain. So anyways, that option D is wrong. Uh, now if we apply the Maslow's uh, concept uh, as per him, uh, the back pain is a physiological need and. he his need that 
yeah, of belonging to a group that he that if ram takes him to a person having another back pain so that he feels belonging to a group will be a social belongingness need but yes i mean in option c meeting other people who is having the same problem helps but social belongingness does not mean this right it means on a much holistic level that you need to be active in the society whether you have a back pain or not and moreover as per maslow the physiological need that is the back pain must be fulfilled first that is the lower order need must be fulfilled first before you think of higher order need or before a person can satisfy his higher higher order need so clearly the answer should be b that is the lower order physiological need of back pain needs to be satisfied first or resolved first and that's why ram should take sham to the yoga instructor okay now we move to the second theory which is eldorfer's hierarchy of needs this is also in relation to what maslow has you no know, propagated so eldorfer on the same line has propagated that instead of five level of needs there are three level of needs they are existence relatedness and growth but they are more more or less related to what uh, maslow says though there are some differences which we'll discuss later so the differences are oh sorry the similarities are that existence means these are basic needs you need for existence these are physiological and safety you need physiological needs such as hunger thirst need to be satisfied and you need to feel safe for your existence then there is related relatedness needs that is the same as belongingness as per maslow that is you need to have social uh, activism in yourself you need to belong to a group you need to be related to a group to to achieve high, higher higher in your life then the third one is growth which is similar to esteem and self actualization propagated by maslow so growth means that you need respect from others you need self respect also but at the same time you need to have self actualization that is you need to achieve what you can achieve now we will try to do a comparison between elderfer and maslow's theories we will try to see what are the differences because both of them seems to sound the same so as per elderfer there are three needs elderfer says that it's not necessary that your lower order needs must be satisfied first and then only you can move on to high higher higher level needs let me put it another way maslow says that the lower level needs need to be fulfilled first okay that is your physiological needs need to be fulfilled first then only you can move to higher order that is uh, safety needs unless and until your physiological needs are not met you will never feel that your safety needs are being fulfilled or you will never try to fulfill those safety needs so as per maslow the need gets satisfied in an order first the lower level then the higher level this concept is called satisfaction progression that is you satisfy one need and you move to another need but elderfer has a different concept he does not feel that you no know, needs needs uh, all the needs needs to be fulfilled in a particular order once the lower order needs are fulfilled then employee will move only upward and then upward and then upward he feels that obviously employees will try to achieve higher order needs such as growth needs but in case he is not able to fulfill that need he will come to a lower level that is to a relatedness level as per his hierarchy and this concept is called frustrated regression that in case he is not able to achieve higher order need he will get frustrated he will come back to a lower need in this case from growth needs he will come back to the relatedness needs and from relatedness needs he will come back to the existing needs let's take an example of a frustrated regression suppose a person wants to do a highly challenging work but is not getting the challenging work so he'll get frustrated what he'll do is he'll, he'll try to move back to his lower order need relatedness need he will become he will try to fulfill his relatedness needs by becoming more social uh by going out for lunch by going out to play cricket table tennis spending more time with people so this way he will try to achieve more on his lower order needs and hence this way he will go or achieve the principle of frustrated regression 
Moreover, there is one more difference. Maslow feels that only one need is active at a time, whatever it is, out of those five needs. But Adolf Adolfer feel that there can be more than one need active at one time at different levels. Like a person might also having feeling the need to satisfy growth needs or having the urge to filling the related needs at the same time. Now, what are the implications of Adolfer theory? The first implication is that managers must try to recognize multiple needs as Adolfer feels that instead of only one need being active at time, there can be multiple needs active at one time. So an employee can have a need for a challenging work and employee can have need to be socially active at the same time and managers should then should try to fulfill both the needs. Now, what are the implications of Adolfer theory two? As per him, financial in incentives you know, can help you in basic existence in providing you or satisfying your physiological and safety needs, but then they shall never be able to motivate you to achieve higher order needs like growth, like achievement, self recognition, self actualization. Okay. So financial incentives can work only up to a certain level. So here is the employee called Ram. He is a very intelligent employee and he wants to work hard. He wants to achieve things in life. He wants challenging work, but somehow he got some repeat work, which is not able to come, which is able to complete just in half the time designated to him. And as a result, he starts going out. He is involved more in the social gatherings. He goes out for lunch. He goes out to play cricket, table tennis during the office time. And now you have to analyze that what could be the reason for Ram to involved in such a behavior, though he is a very intelligent, hardworking and a guy who wants to achieve you no know, bigger things in life here are your options the first thing is or the first option is that his lead need for relatedness was not fulfilled and hence he started spending time with friends to fulfill his lower level need first well yes socialing with friends will fulfill his lower level need of relatedness but is it mentioned that his lower level relatedness need is not met it's not nowhere mentioned in the passage right or in the question Second option is that his need for growth was fulfilled and he therefore did not want it to be a high performer anymore. Maybe let's see this option C. He was not getting enough opportunities to do challenging work and therefore he moved to lower level need of relatedness. Well, this can be the option because in the question it is giving, it's given that he is getting some repeat work which he can only do in half the time and hence he is not getting enough opportunities to do some challenging work. This is the interpretation of what is given in the question. And as per principle of frustrated reg regression, obviously he will try to move to the lower level need if his need for higher level uh, need is not being met. So option C seems to be a possible solution. Option D is the person was trying to explore the world which is a basic need before he moves to other needs. So it says that person needs to explore the world, which is a basic need and therefore he needs to be socially active before he moves to needs of higher, higher, higher order needs. Uh, that seems to be just confusing option. And uh, the option is either A or C. Now you can be confused between A, C and E. But option A is no wrong because nowhere in the question it's, it's given that his lead need for latedness was not fulfilled then if option A is wrong, then option E, which says either A or C is also wrong because A as per is wrong. Then the only option left or shall be true is option C because that fulfills what is given in the question that also fulfills the principle of frustrated regression. So your answer would be C, right? So guys, these kind of concept checks should really help you to learn to apply the concepts that what we have been repeatedly saying. Uh, we have put these concept checks in the video, we have put these concept checks in the notes and in the MCQs also there would be a lot of such case study questions so you can know again and again attempt those questions and learn to apply the concepts. Now we move to uh, the last theory which is McClelland's theory of needs uh, which we would be dis discussing in this video. As per McClelland's theory of needs, there are three needs. First is need for achievement which is you know drive to excel to achieve something in life to do challenging tasks the second is need for power to control others to influence others the third is need for affiliation which is you want your co-workers to be your friends you want to be in good relation you want a corporate environment 
let's discuss further on this each of these needs as per McLean's need for achievement means you need challenging work you need regular feedback you avoid high risk and low risk situations avoid high risk situations because that makes a situation clearly uncertain you are not sure whether you will achieve what you want to achieve low risk situations you will avoid because it will not you know really satisfying if you achieve something by putting only very lesser amount of effort because you are achiever you want a complex task assigned to you now what does need for affiliation means it means you are interested in teamwork you are interested in collaboration over competition and you do not like uncertainty you want reduced uncertainty so on a whole uh, these are the keywords that you need to remember because a lot of questions are asked or based on keywords to make the questions confusing so remember these keywords if in any of the options in the exam you see these keywords just mark those options and the third one is need for influence the need for influence means you need to control others uh, you uh, need or you have high value for discipline uh, you avoid high risk and low risk situations I think it, it, it's almost everywhere and you like to have group goals which you want to achieve by influencing the group now if if, if somebody asks you what is good for a group need for affiliation or need for influence see working in a group is good for a people for need for affiliation because they want to work in a good team environment but if the question is which kind of need would be good to achieve goals assigned to the group then need for influence should come because an individual can group individual who has need for affiliation can work in a group but he cannot make sure that group goals are achieved that can be done only by need for influence one who can control and direct others right and need for influence can be of two types personal power and social group power personal power is where you try to individually satisfy yourself by controlling or directing others but person who has need for influencing a social group is much better because he tries to influence a group and achieve the organization goals rather than his personal satisfaction okay now what are the implications of mcclellan's theories let's understand the first implication uh, the people who have need for achievement needs challenging projects and timely feedback the person who have need for influence need roles where they are able to manage or control others the persons who have need for affiliation needs cooperative environment to work in what are the implications of mcclellan's theory 2 person who have need for affiliation really like to be good with the people so people who like them or they like them if they something even if that is not in the interest of the company managers might agree to that so there they lose the objectivity of the decision making capability so that can be really bad for the company the persons who have need for influence yes they will provide discipline they will try to control they will try to achieve group goals they will have proper work ethics but they may lack the flexibility required for executing skilled projects like for example we are executing a very skilled projects people are highly skilled and motivated and there if you try to control them that you have to come at this particular time you have to go at this particular time you have to go for lunch at this particular time then that will not work so they need to be little flexible at that time which they cannot so for people who have need for influence might not be good in executing skill projects let's do a concept check on this suppose there are three roles in a company the first role is of a business business analyst we call this a role a the second role is of a tech lead which call this role p the third role is of a project manager we call this role c the role and responsibilities of role a is let it has to do a lot of client interactions the role and responsibilities of role b is that it has to resolve challenging tasks the role and responsibilities of role c is to meet the deadlines planning and delegating tasks and deciding rewards and punishments now there are three people in the company we will discuss who these three people are and then we have to decide which person shall be assigned which role the first person is sham oh he seems to be angry right he has a need for power that's why he has a very angry face the second one is lakshman he has a need for affiliation he wants to work within a team the third one is ram he is like a technical nerd 
he wants to achieve something he has a need for achievement now as per you what should be the role assigned out of these three roles a b and c to these three people now this is a very conceptual question but very easy kind of a case study now you know a business analyst has to do a lot of client interactions that is given in the exam so who can be the best for that sham will never be because he needs to control people and to cloak and one has to be very affable with the client rather than to control it so sham is not an option here the second is ram ram has a need for achievement uh, client interactions might give him achievement so that can be a possible thing and then there is lakshman lakshman has a need for affiliation Uh, so he works he try he likes to works with people he likes to interact with them so i think he is the best choice for client attraction so i think lakshman fits in here right and then the second option is you are a tech lead you uh, like resolving challenging tasks so sham who has need for power will never like resolving challenging tasks he, he because he needs to he likes to control people Ram has needs for achievement. He likes challenging tasks, so he should be the best fit here. And then the third option is between Sham and Role C. Let's see, does it fit in? Sham has a need for power, and Role C also means planning, delegating tasks, and deciding rewards and punishments. It means Sham has the power to delegate tasks, and he can decide on the re rewards and punishments, which will help in him in controlling people. So that also fits in here. so overall we have fitted the roles to the people so that should be the answer so lakshman should be role a that is business analyst ram should be role b tech lead sham should be role c project manager right so this is what we discussed uh, so what should be the answer we just just discuss yes the answer should be this one that's what we discuss in our previous part of this video Well, just to let you know that we have launched our RBI Grade B 2018 course, which will be an updated and completely revamped course. Uh, we have videos on all the topics for interactive learning, uh, as such as this video. The videos would be covered for all the topics, whether it's finance, management, economics, social issues, current affairs, English, anything under the sun. Uh, so this is a sample video which we would be distributing free on our different social platforms: YouTube, Facebook group, WhatsApp groups. and this shall also be available free uh on a website uh so just to reiterate that only this particular video on motivation which we discuss shall be available free all other videos uh, related to our course shall be part of our paid content uh, we have also included summary sheets for easy revision uh, in which we will be just summarizing what we have discussed in the chapter uh the summary sheets shall be length of only 1/3 of the whole chapter so that shall make it very easy to revise in a very lesser time then as we said uh, concept building is very important so we have introduced the concept of worksheets which will include filling the blanks mcq student falls and match the column uh, so there will be a lot of uh, kind of exercises in the worksheets which will which will help you or which will you know make you learn to apply the concepts and trust me it you will be very very confident after solving those worksheets and it will be a different world for you altogether and then there would be regular test after every 2 3 chapters because practice is very important to retain and to build and to learn to apply concepts and then there will be one live session every 15 days in which we shall discuss about how to approach various topics how to approach preparation in general uh, what should be the schedule what should be our approach to difficult questions like this so as and when it comes you will see what what all we are discussing in the live sessions and for mcqs we have divided them into two levels first is basic mcqs which will be very easy just give you confidence after reading the chapter that yes you have completed the chapter and you have covered all the topics and another one is exam based mcqs in which we shall include case study based mcqs also uh, to give you real time exam environment like like the case study questions we have included in the concept checks in this video Well that's it about the three theories of motivation which we discuss in this video
uh, if you want to see a detailed management paper analysis for 2017 click here if you want to have detailed video on our course offerings for 2018 course click here if you want to have some sample free material and 2017 memory based paper then sign up on website by clicking here